Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Friday Ramblings. I'm your host. I'm the one who rambles every Friday. Because that's the name of the show and that's what we do. This means that we're going to discuss some stuff. And what we're going to discuss is a video game that is classic and awesome. Do you like the Marios? I bet you like the Marios. What about a Super Nintendo Mario? Ooh, that's some of the best Mario. Got a good flavor to it. Nice and 16-bit. and Just mm, seasoned just right with enough games to establish a firm sense of what we know. Give us a good feel for what we expect. So let's turn all that upside down. And spill it all out on the floor. So we can do something different. No, I'm not talking about Mario Kart. We already discussed that. Nope. We are taking Mario and we are putting him from the platforming genre to the RPG genre. Quite literally, Super Mario RPG. Subtitled Legend of the Seven Stars. The game came out in 1996 and it's the first Mario role playing game using an action command style battle system. Now in this game, Mario, with the help of a few friends, we'll discuss in a few moments, needs to stop the newly debuting Smithy Gang while collecting seven star pieces so that peace may return and, more importantly, wishes may be granted once more in the Mushroom Kingdom. Yep, that's right folks, this is not your same old Bowser, this is not even everyone's favorite bad boy, Wario. We've got a brand new villain with a brand new set of sub-bosses to him. Now the good part is, the game does start off with a classic Storm, Barrios, Storm Bowser's Castle and Rescue the Princess segment before Smithy shows up, literally crashing the party, as in straight into Bowser's castle sending Bowser and his loyal troopers straight out the door Smithy claiming this as his local headquarters so you still have that lovely sense of the Mario game being primarily about getting back getting to Bowser's castle to stop the big bad it's just not Bowser this time now Mario journeys across the Greater Mushroom Kingdom, and while the first couple areas of the world do have a passing resemblance to the Mushroom Kingdom as we know it, the bulk of the map is brand new areas, created just for this game, populated by new characters. Man, Nintendo really went crazy with this, right? Well, 50-50. The game is actually primarily developed by Square as in Squaresoft, as in the company that would merge with Enix and is now known as Square Enix. Yep, people that had already made themselves famous with the Final Fantasy series were those that Nintendo went to to help make sure that this RPG game was not a failed experiment, and it is not. Let's break down who joins Mario on his campaign. First up, we get original character Mallow. Mallow is a little bit of a coward, a little bit of a wimp, but once you coax him on with a little friendly support, turns out to not only be a brave warrior at heart, but more importantly, this little fluffball has some powerful magic, both offensive and support. This allows Mario to very quickly su supplement his own skills, which while he technically is magic, is basically his iconic fireball and jump attacks. His primary attacks be either being fisticuffs or swinging the hammer. Making a nice little throwback reference to Donkey Kong as well as the more specific Hammer Brothers enemies from the main Mario franchise that we know and love. 
Mallow's full discovery of exactly who he is and why he just doesn't seem to look like anybody else in the Mushroom Kingdom is a subplot of the game and is resolved towards the end of the game but before the big super finale. Good timing. Next up in the original character list is Gino. Now Gino is an agent from the Star Road sent to retrieve the seven stars to repair the Star Road as well as beating Smithy's gang for not only shattering the Star Road but trying to take its power for themselves. Gino is the most powerful of the magic users in the game and as he is a higher spirit possesses a marionette style doll in order to have a physical form in the Mushroom Kingdom. His serious no-nonsense attitude is the perfect complement to Mallow's somewhat comedic awkward nature and Mario is happy to have him come along as somebody a little more experienced with the nature of these star pieces and what they can do. Not to mention, as I said, those incredibly awesome magic powers. Oh, but you know, we gotta have a little bit more of that Mario flavor. Even though you can only have three active party members, half the fun of RPG is customizing your experience. So there's two more characters. You can even go full classic here and after a certain amount of game, recruit the exiled Beast King himself, the Clawed Conqueror, Bowser. After encountering him a couple times with what the remnants of his army and his failed attempts to get his castle back, you ally yourself up with Bowser, who is a physical tank. Besides having a strong attack and strong, he also has strong defense. And his and he is more than capable of plowing through most characters in the game. However, he will insist that he is not equals with Mario, but that Mario himself has been recruiting to Bowser's Koopa Troop. Because underneath it all, Bowser is still the gruff conqueror he always has been and will refuse to concede Mario is anything but a weaker link in the greater chain that is Bowser's empire. So who else joins us? Maybe Luigi? No, sadly Luigi does not appear in this game. <gasps> Maybe one of the Toads? No, they're going to stick mostly to the spin-off sporty racing games. Could it be? Is this a rare, especially for this far back, playable appearance of Princess Peach Toadstool? That's right, folks. Although it does take a large chunk of the game to locate her after, like Bowser and Mario, she was sent flying by Smithy's explosive entry into our world. Upon finding the princess, she declares that she will go along and be not a damsel in distress, but the backup to Mario that he desperately needs, mostly somebody experienced at keeping an eye on Bowser. Princess brings wonderful healing powers to the party, thus she can be a good substitute for support character Mallow for those people who want to go full-blown classic Mario feel to their team and snub the newbies. Princess's attacks primarily consist of slaps, although she will sometimes equip a frying pan to give it a little extra oomph. That rounds out your playable characters. So, who are the bad guys du jour? Why, let's break it down. 
doop 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 so much so much awesome stuff in this you have ongoing annoyance and early boss croco the thief we have sewer bound freak show balone who will harass the party on a couple of occasions you have got bunt and raspberry a most unique enemy encounter that will challenge mario's perception of good parties and whether or not they need awesome desserts Johnny and King Calamari, rulers of the sea. Valentina and her sidekicks, Dodo and Birdo. But more importantly, we have got various members of the Smithy Gang, such as Mac, Bowyer, Punchinello, your div. Yuridovich, Mega Smilax, Zar Dragon, Zombone, five, count them, five Axum Rangers, nicely color coordinated for your pop culture reference meta joke needs. Boomer, Factory Chief, his manager and director, and of course, Smithy himself appearing in a couple different forms. You also have as optional bosses people like Culex and, depending on how you play the game, you may or may not pick a fight with Booster. As well as, in a lovely little side quest that can prove one of the most challenging things in the game, the martial arts master of Monstro Town, Jinx who seeks to challenge you and prove who is the best warrior of all time. Now there is some other bosses and a lot of regular enemies we're not discussing here because as I said, said many a times, we're here just to tantalize you, not to tell you everything there is to tell you. So. Is this a game that you should play? Or is it a game that's really not so good? Yes, you should play Mario RPG because it is most excellent. As we've said before that this being done towards the last year of the Super Nintendo's lifeline at least the last year it was the main console as the N64 itself debuted a few months after Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars manages to play with what little bit of established Mario formula there was Presenting things in a pseudo 3D atmosphere that served as a wonderful transition of those who played it to the full 3D awesomeness of Mario 64, as well as providing a bigger and grander world to Mario, and more importantly, putting some serious character development on the Princess and Bowser. Although in the mainstream games it would continue to play the same roles, this spin-off, alternate reality, however you want to call it, serves as a chance to see a more fleshed out version of Bowser and exactly why he runs the Koopa Troop, how he runs it, and what tends to make him not so much angry but down in the dumps. Yes, we get a little bit of sad Bowser. As well as seeing the princess take on a more proactive role, not being a script hook and a plot point, but somebody willing to defend her kingdom to the best of her abilities, hike up her dress, 
not too far, you dirty-minded people. Just just high enough to, to, you know, get a good pair of walking shoes on. Let's see you. Don't don't you go there. Stop it. But yes, willing to put the work in and risk her health alongside her paramour Mario to make sure peace returns. But you said Luigi wasn't in the game. Now that is sad for many of us Luigi fans. But have no fear because you can unlock a little side area that you may be familiar with called Yoshi's Island and visit with the various members of the Yoshi species. Now while Yoshi is not a full playable character, you can in a lovely little sub-quest help him race against the current champion of Yoshi's Island in a fun little racing mini game that will give you a nice little break from the combat system as well as make you feel good by beating the current champion who is using his vaunted status to set down some hard rules about who's allowed to race on the official track and who is not freeing up the Yoshis to resume their more informal let's just do it for the fun of doing it racing subculture they got going on the island along with providing a little bit of ongoing story for some of the NPCs if you're one of those people who loves to talk to everybody you see in an RPG but wait there's more is there references to other games yes there is there is references to other games the Donkey Kong series is highlighted in its earliest versions by there being an enemy who throws barrels like Donkey Kong and in fact has a passing resemblance to the Great Ape himself, although a bit skinnier, slightly different coloring, and usually wearing heavy chains. Link himself can be found sleeping in one particular town in and when talked to a jingle that is lifted straight from the Legend of Zelda series plays. Also, if you return to the Mushroom Castle after a certain point in the game, you can find the star of Metroid, Samus Aran herself, claiming that she is resting up for her fight against Mother Brain. Along with a Samus action figure can be found inside a toy box in another portion of the game. The aforementioned side boss Culex is lifted straight from the Final Fantasy series. While not a direct existing character, the way you play him, his high difficulty level, and the boss music is all very familiar to Final Fantasy veterans. Thus, it is a little splinter of what might have been if we'd gotten a full Final Fantasy Mario crossover instead of just an RPG game made by the Final Fantasy people featuring Mario. The, we also get references to F-Zero, Star Fox, the later Donkey Kong Country version of Donkey Kong, as well as other pre-existing Mario games at this time through remixed overworld and town music. The game itself has often been re referenced in later games, including other spin-offs like Mario Tennis and the Smash Brothers series. 
as well as some of the remakes of the early Mario Brothers games that came out after Mario RPG. But if this game's so awesome, why wasn't there a sequel, you say? Well, it kind of was. Although no direct sequel would come to pass, and Malo and Gino's inclusion in later spinoff games has been precluded due to their ownership being shared with Squaresoft, further Mario role-playing games have been created through the Paper Mario series. Now, originally Paper Mario was announced under the title of Super Mario RPG 2, and rumors have it that the, that the visuals were supposed to much more closely resemble The Legend of the Seven Stars. However, even after the massive overhaul of it, the game would retain different mechanics and characters from the Mario RPG series, making Paper Mario and its various sequels essentially a spiritual successor to Mario RPG, even if there has never been a direct sequel. This is a good thing, and we will discuss Paper Mario series in later episodes. At some point in 2013, the game's co-director, Yoshihiko Makawa, responded that he felt Super Mario RPG accomplished what he set out to do and that he personally had no interest in revisiting the World War's characters. However, in a 2022 interview, the other co-director, Chihiro Fuji Fujioka, expressed interest in creating a sequel, stating he would like it to be his final game project. So, I don't know. Maybe Nintendo and Squaresoft can work out an agreement. We get some sort of sequel to it. Maybe a like remake with some extra content put into it. It's still a possibility, ultimately. Nothing in video games is ever set in stone. Done. Still, if you can track down this series, play it. It has shown up in Nintendo's various uh, online shops in the past. So if you see it on there, go ahead and play it. It did show up in the Super Nintendo Classic, which is a good thing, as it is one of the hallmark games of the system. Although its sales were considered to be only middling due to the fact that, as I said, it came out mere months before the N64, took a lot of attention and spending money away from the Super Nintendo and its library games. Still, pretty much everybody that's ever played the game loves it. It is synonymous with a overlooked but must play game when those of us like myself who are old tend to discuss things with the newer generation of dude no you really got to play this original this old mario rpg game it will just like woo, it will grab you and hook you still it's all i can tell you without feeling like i'm ruin i would be ruining part of the game for you i want you to enjoy and experience the story because RPGs are all about story, the fun mechanics that are easy to understand, but hard as sin to master, and potentially rage when you realize, no matter how thorough you think you're being, there's still a couple secrets you didn't find. So, play it, enjoy it, but come back here in seven days for another Friday rambling. After all, we are here every Friday just for you, so we can help you find more entertainment to enjoy your life with. Stay happy, stay healthy, see you on the flip side.